Hello and welcome to a special G.I. Joe fueled episode of It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. Hello and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. This episode is a collection of Fistful of Joes. It has been one of the more popular segments on the show, and I thought a good way to help fans of G.I. Joe to navigate It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room would be to just give a collection of Fistful of Joes. Now, this is the one segment that I've probably done the most of that has had the best feedback, and people seem to like my unique take on reviewing these great action figures that have endured for 30 plus years. So, without further ado, here are the first three Fistful of Joes that I did in a small, handy to take with you package. So, here you go. Yo, Joe! That's right, Fistful of Joes. And what I mean by that is I'm going to reach in and pull a handful of Joes out randomly from my many boxes here of my collection. So, let's get it started. Grabbed a random box here. I don't even know how many would be in one of these, but I got a bunch of them. Uh, so let's reach in here. We got a handful of Joes. So let me put this down. As you can see, I have them all individually baggied here, my loose ones that I've picked up over the years. Some of them I've had since I was a kid. So let's kick things off here with Zanzibar. Now Zanzibar is Dreadnought Pirate. And as you can see here, one of the things that makes him vastly different than a lot of other Joe figures is he has hair. Now, he came on a little air skift thing when you purchased him. I don't have that anymore. But what I found really cool about the skift was it came with a spear and like a big mallet, like a warhammer thing. And sorry Zanzibar, but those were just really neat additions to your Joe Cobra arsenal. Um, his air skift was pretty cool and I can remember having so much fun with it. And there were a lot of different air skiffs that came out in the Joe line. I mean, Destro had an air skiff. Serpentor had an air skiff. Zanzibar had an air skiff. So, and there, there were others that I'm, of course, forgetting. And they had different hydro sleds and things like that. But awesome figure. Any addition to the Dreadnoughts was cool. So, next figure. One of my personal favorites, and this is awesome that I uh, grabbed him here. I have all of his gear in the little bag here, and we'll go over that in a second. But hit and run. There's just so something so awesome about how he's fully painted in camouflage, even his face. I think the first time I saw that in a movie was Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando, when he's putting on the camouflage on his face. So you can see that a little bit better. But I always love this character. And what's cool is, as we get to the gear here, on his belt here, he has a little loop. And that was different than a lot of Joe figures. And what he came with was... Oh, I got a stand here. This duffel bag, full of string with a grappling hook, and you could actually feed it through his little loop and make it like he's climbing a mountain or up a building. And he also came with this kick-ass huge knife. And of course, this is the age of awesome big knives. Everyone from Crocodile Dundee to Rambo had awesome knives. So awesome addition to the arsenal and he had this little chunky rifle that I always liked 
but one of my all-time favorite figures. Hit and run. Put him back in the bag here. Zanzibar, I'll get to you later, dude. Chill out in your swamp. And he's going back in the box. Maybe I need to separate boxes. So next time we do this, I don't pull out the same ones. I have to think about that. Now this one, Quick Kick. And this is actually a fun school version of Quick Kick. When I turned 30, I started getting back into G.I. Joe again. And I just couldn't get enough. Of course, one of the things I wanted was carded figures, and they were super expensive. They still are super expensive. But I found Fun School. Found a distributor that sent them straight from India, and they came carded. The cards looked just like the old ones. Uh, once I got them, I mean, the quality's vastly uh, different. We'll be kind and say different. But... Um, I mean, it's a pretty good reproduction, so there's some paint mess-ups on there. His feet happen to be a different color than the rest of his body. But, one of the cool things is he came with all of his gear. Now, these are definitely not made as well as the original Hasbro ones, but we got his nunchuck, his katana, and his awesome backpack. Now, this was a figure that I had as a kid, and I, I cherished it. I loved it. I have no idea what I did with it. Probably something stupid. But I remember getting it as a gift. So, this meant a lot to me to find it again in one way, shape, or form. Uh, hopefully one day, if I get back into the collecting game, I'll be able to find an original one. But for now, I'm very happy with having him in my collection. Next is someone else that looks mostly together here. But Crazy Legs. Here's another Joe paratrooper. Great sculpting of like a quilted jacket and uh, embellishments on the legs and arms. He's got a nice little smirk on his face, as you can see. I don't know how well looking in the camera, but it might be a little blurry, so I apologize. I truly do. But came with his little backpack rig. That was really cool. Let's see if I can do this here. But, it had to be, oh, did it wrong, wrapped around the legs to make it almost seem like a real parachute type setup. There we go. Unfortunately, he didn't come with a real parachute like Ace did back in the day. But, it's still pretty cool. We still have his gun here. I believe it came with a little bipod, which I don't have anymore. But this, I honestly think, is the same one I had as a kid. He survived whatever great onslaught befell a lot of my other figures. Uh, middle school's a tough year. Couple years. But he survived. I still have him. Still have his gear like I showed. So we'll put him back in the bag. And set him off to the side. Maybe I'll start up a new box so we don't pull the same ones next time we do this. Now this is one I picked up much later at a flea market. Um, when we did our top 20 Cobra vehicles, the water moccasin was one of my favorites I never had one but Cottonmouth was one of the all, most awesome figures in my opinion growing up I just love the colors there's something so 80s about this palette got a little bit of a neon green kinda like the my side of the laundry room logo 
just always have had a love of that color. Reminds me of everything from, let's say, Cottonmouth to Halloween and eerie green. But this type of teal, and it's got silver paint, Cobra logo that still looks great. His little wonky in the waist area. Whoop. Whoa, but that's okay. Let's see what the copyright is. What year? It's written on the leg. Just out of curiosity. Oh man, that's hard to see. Excuse me, folks. 1984. And what's great is the screws are still pristine. There's no rust at all. His back screw, where the backpack peg is no rust so whomever had this never took their water moccasin or cotton mouth in the bathtub or swimming pool or local backyard stream as we've seen in the commercials check out those episodes to see what i'm talking about okay the gist is i have all my gi joe figures in little plastic boxes excuse me like this one I have no idea how many of them are in here, but what I do is I just yank a handful of Joes out, fistful of Joes if you will, out of the box, and I just talk about them. Mostly my experience with them. Oh, keep this a blind grab. Nothing too scientific. So let's take a look, see what I got here. Okay. Ooh, looks like I got a couple good ones here. First up, I've had this dude ever since I was a kid. He has seen better days, and he is missing all of his gear. But, Crockmaster. Sorry about any blurriness there. Now, of course, one of the best things about Croc Master was he came with a big crocodile alligator. But, another cool feature he had was he came with a bullwhip. And that's something I wish I still had. But, such a great figure. Menacing, spooky looking. Stalking the swamps with his gators and his crocs. And in the comic, he patrolled Cobra Island. And uh, the alligators and stuff were like watchdogs. And they would attack people and eat people that tried to infiltrate the island. Like I said, I've had this figure ever since it was released. This is OG original. I'm the only owner. He's still very poseable. In good shape. But minus a lot of his gear. Well, all of his gear. Who am I joking? But I love this figure. Always will have a soft spot in my heart. Anyway, on to the next Joe. Sorry, bagging them up. I keep them all bagged. Ooh. The OG Cobra Commander. Now, he's in pretty good shape. Other than he's got one little scuff right there on his face mask. But this I bought secondary. I never had him as a kid. Always wanted him. Even have his gun. A buddy of mine in kindergarten got him mail away. And I was so enthralled by the character. And memory serves me this is even before the cartoon came out so i had no idea this was just an awesome looking guy oh i don't want to force the gun in there and break a thumb but like i said i picked this guy up at a flea market reasonably priced in great condition even has his blaster here which almost looked like a signal flashlight I don't know what the hell it's supposed to be, laser gun or something. But, always going to be a fan of Cobra Commander. Toy, comic, cartoon, what have you. 
very very militaristic looking with his high collar and his side buttoned uniform here but love this dude sorry for the buzzing if you hear getting texts or something email who knows nowadays um, another one pick this guy up super cheap on the secondary market because nobody really wants them but I was always a fan but crystal ball there's like a rumor about this character that Stephen King helped design him and all he came with I might be wrong here was a shield with a hologram well, like a lenular picture on it of an eyeball and swirl because he hypnotized people and he looked straight up old school European gypsy like from an old 50s drive-in movie with his fur collar and leather tunic but I was always a fan he made a couple appearances in the comic always dug them um, great condition probably because no one wanted to friggin play with them all the screws are still nice and silver no rust sorry I'm not checking his gender here 1987 the only thing really wrong with him is he's missing his shield and there's a little scuffing on the back here at his hair but what cool hair it is I wish I would go gray like that. who am I kidding I wish I still had hair but if I had hair I wish it would go gray like that next Joe or Cobra will be my personal favorite this is dumb luck that I pull him tonight but chuckles now recently I think more people dig them because of what they did in, in more recent comics which I haven't read but <clears throat> to me of course he's very much inspired oh he's got a loose head very much inspired by Miami Vice and this is my original character my figure he's very scuffed up and well played with but very inspired by Miami Vice like I said like he was a DEA undercover type of operative for GI Joe but to me that put him up on a pedestal because I was not allowed to watch Miami Vice growing up so this to me just felt like having a little bit of that show when I couldn't watch it like it was very taboo so to have this I just felt like ooh, I was slightly empowered oh sorry for the loose head my man but awesome floral Hawaiian shirt here he came with a cool shoulder holster that you actually put on which was very rare for Joe figure to have and he came with a pistol that went in Jesus Christ but one of my favorites just for the weird things the kids think sometimes I'm sure that's why a lot of R-rated movies were made into cartoons and toys and comics like RoboCop and such because it gave kids a sense of empowerment because they weren't allowed to watch the R-rated movies. I wasn't allowed to watch Miami Vice because it was violent and my parents thought it was over my head so why even bother. Now this is Shockwave. The Joe SWAT officer. Got some problem here in the hip area. Awesome. Awesome paint job. Awesome character. Awesome design. Has the urban cam. Oh man, you're loose. Dude. But urban camouflage of blue and yellow. Urban for the 80s, of course. Hiding in a roller rink or discotheque. But yet again with this mask he could stand in as part of a ninja brigade or something with snake eyes and of course it's busted but this is the original 
Uzi that he came with with a silencer, but it had a stock that came out that is long gone. But this is one of my originals as a kid that I held on to. He never met any cruel fates of some of my toys when I became older, which I still kicked myself over. But awesome, awesome figure. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at a couple of the first episodes of Fistful of Joes. Now, let's see a commercial. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. It's here, the G.I. Joe collection. Infantry Trooper. Codename Grunt. Bazooka Soldier. Codename Zap. Mortar Soldier. Codename Short Fuse. Laser Rifle Trooper. Codename Flash. Ranger. Codename Stalker. Communications Officer. Codename Breaker. Machine Gunner. Codename Rock and Roll. Counterintelligence. Codename Scarlet. Commando. Codename Snake Eyes. Each sold separately. G.I. Joe from Hasbro. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that commercial. That was one of the very first G.I. Joe action figure commercials that aired on TV. I personally don't remember it, but I absolutely love watching it. And the animation's awesome. The toys are awesome. What a great way to roll out G.I. Joe. Now, without further ado, here's number three of Fistful of Joes. As with every Fistful of Joes, I have one of my handy dandy boxes here. And I'm going to blindly grab a handful of G.I. Joe figures. I don't know how many this is, but we got some file cards, so let's see. Okay, let's get this out of the way and take a look, shall we? As I knock, knock the mic out of the way. Okay, first off, this is a very unusual piece. Darklon. He was a member of Destro's Iron Grenadiers. And I believe he came with his vehicle. I don't think he was ever carted separately. Now what's interesting about this one is, this is a custom repaint. The uh, vintage toy store that I bought it at, was selling it this way, probably from someone else's collection, but it just looked so awesome. I just had to have it. And, if I'm not mistaken, they actually had it cheaper than listed because someone had painted on it. But, I don't know if you can see, but they did a great job of like highlighting the little bolts and stuff in his armor with red paint. They did a little little art thing under his eye there, little symbol. But this is a sweet figure. He probably, I think he gets criticized a lot for being like a ladder, you know, ladder in the series character when they started going downhill right before the Eco Warriors and Ninja Force and all that. But this repaint, I mean, his colors weren't that, I mean, they were kind of. It was like a drab green and brown camouflage, if I'm remembering correctly, which I think I am. But he came with a kick-ass gun. Unfortunately, I don't have that. But, let's see what's next. Okay. This is another Fun School figure. Whoops. Fun School Zartan. You can instantly tell that it's not one of the original, even though it looks great. It's because he doesn't have the removable chest plate or the removable guards on his forearms or shins. But it's a great vintage sculpt. And like with the quick kick in one of the past Fistful of Joes, um... I got this like direct from an Indian distributor and didn't pay a lot and this was when I was first getting back into collecting Joe figures and I thought what the hey I'll probably never own a Zartan again especially a vintage one from my childhood so this is the next best thing side story I did find one and I'm sure we'll get to that one day but he even comes with his little mask here. Let's pop it on. 
Ah. Now here's a question. How many people growing up thought that that was his hair and not a hood? Of course we know nowadays it's a hood. But back in the day I thought it was his hair. See, and that's one of the problems with the fun schools. It just does not fit properly. Of course my hands are all up in the way here. But it does not fit properly with that because his hood is molded a lot more rigid than the original figures was. Which is good because some of the problems with the original figure was some of the ripping in the hood around where you would put his mask. But still, a great figure. Happy to have it in my collection. I have an empty bag and that kind of distresses me to who is not where they need to be. Anyway, next it's very rare for me to keep file cards. I think my parents ended up throwing away a bunch of them, but Deep Six, not very poseable, of course. Always ridiculed for that. But that is an awesome figure. Oh, very loose. Hey, 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 go, go dance. But used to have a hose that would go there at the little plunger thing that would get him to rise and fall in the water. Like he's bobbing. And of course he came with the shark. But, like I said, have his file card. Shark driver. Deep six. These masterful way for a toy to tell the story. A lot of toy, well, a lot of toys aren't coming out of left field like G.I. Joe was in the day. Everything's attached to a movie or a TV show or friggin' wrestling, but back then, this is what powered your imagination, because he wasn't in the TV show that much. He had his place during one of the mini-series, mini but didn't get that much exposure, so this told the story, and the comics, of course. G.I. Joe was, as I said, was something... At the time that you could get three separate stories all involving characters that you loved. You had the cartoon, the toys, and the comic book. And the comic book was, of course it sounds silly saying it out loud, but was a little bit more adult than a lot of the other cartoon and toy tie-ins. The Magic of Larry Hama. Ooh. Now, this is a very old one. Oh, no. And somewhere along the line, he broke his O-ring. Shoot. Good thing I have replacements, because he definitely needs it. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's actually dry-rotted around the little metal hook there. So, I'll have to pop him open if I can. Unfortunately, he's so old, he's a little rusted up, so... I might not be able to even get that screw out without stripping it, but that's a project for another day, unfortunately. Like I said, I have extra O-rings, so I'm going to try to fix them. 1982. Well, actually 83, because he has the swivel arm. So, he's kind of a reproduction of the original when they introduced the swivel arms into existence. He still looks good just like that, but oh, he gets bisected. Oh, sorry, dude. Hmm, looks like Bishop from Aliens in the bag there. And the last one. One that we actually talked about in our 20 Favorite Cobra Vehicles episode. But the Motor Viper. This is just a great all-around Cobra figure. It could be anything. 
He's so nondescript, yet awesome looking, that you could use him in almost any type of situation. Great helmet. Has two sidearms here. But, I mean, he could be on a motorcycle. He could be flying a helicopter. He could be driving the stun, which is what he came with. But, and he is awfully tight in the waist, which makes me worry that his o-ring is starting to dry rot as well. So I'm not going to push my luck too much and put him back in his bag. But, a great all-around Cobra figure. That's one of the best things about Cobra figures. They're very nondescript, but so awesome looking. Because he's just Murder Viper. He don't have a name. He's just one of many. In a legion of Murder Vipers. But anyway, that was another installment of Fistful of Joes. I hope you've enjoyed Fistful of Joes collection number one. Stay tuned for more collections in the future, and maybe some of the other segments will deserve a collection all their own. Until next time, this has been It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. Keep being rad, stay dorky, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this episode presented by My Side of the Laundry Room. Please check out some of these other recommended videos, and if you enjoyed what you've watched, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and read up on My Side of the Laundry Room at our blog. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.